Hi everybody, this is Hanif Azim. I'll be your trainer today. We're going to be working on eClinical Works and learning how to create new patient accounts. So let's get to it. Once you're logged in, let's first click on the patient search icon. At the top of the screen, it looks like a person with a little magnifying glass. You can see it right here where my yellow arrow is pointing. This pulls up our patient lookup field. We're going to go ahead and look on the right hand corner where it says new patient. This screen that we're looking at now is the new patient information box. You're going to see that most of the fields that we need to fill out have a red asterisk by them. There are a few that do not that you still need to fill out and we'll go through those as we go through this page. Let's start off by filling in the name of the person. Make sure that you have the last name and first name. Always verify the spelling. Next, we're going to move on and add in the address for this patient. Now, anytime you add an address or update an address for a patient here in the information screen, make sure that you always hit that validate button as well. What that's going to do is it's going to bring up the different options that may be listed from the United States Postal Service. Um, it's going to give you the full zip code um, as well as suggestions to make sure that we have the right address that we are putting on file. The next few fields that we have to include are going to include the phone number. Notice that there's a home phone number as well as a cell phone number. If the number the person is giving you is a cell phone, please put the cell phone number both in the home as well as the cell phone number fields, the same number. Now, if they do have a separate home number than their cell phone, make sure that the home number is in the home number field and the cell phone number is in the cell phone number field. We also will need to put in an email address for this patient. This is primarily for patient portal access. Um, so get the person's email. Now, if they do not want to give their email, make sure that you click on the not provided box right next to the email field. And even though both of these fields do not have a red asterisk by them, you do still need to make sure that you fill these out every single time. Starting at the top of the next column, you will have the date of birth field. Please put in the date of birth for this person. Right below that, there's a field for the sex. Please put in the person's birth sex there. Next, we're going to add in the PCP. PCP stands for primary care provider, like their family doctor. If you click on the three dots next to this field, it's going to bring up a search field for you for providers. You can type in in the, the box at the top that says providers, type in the last name of their doctor, their primary care doctor. Um, and it will help you narrow down the one that you want. Just select the doctor that's in, in question and then hit the OK button. Now we have the referring provider. We're going to do this the same way. You're just going to ask the person who you're talking to who referred them to our practice. And um, based on what they say, you're going to go ahead and click on the answer that is appropriate. It's just like the PCP field. You look it up the same way. In this one, there is an option for self, though. So if they were not referred to anyone, you'll just hit self. So um, search for self and then click self-referred and hit OK from there. This next field is for the rendering provider. And you can think about this as the rendering provider is one of our providers, whether that's a doctor, nurse practitioner, or PA that is rendering services, that is providing services to this person. Um, so in this area, you can actually just click in the field and then start to write the name of the provider that they're going to be seeing for their appointment or who's going to be billed. And then you can go ahead and select that person's name. Moving on now to the responsible party. This is the person that's responsible for making the medical decisions for this patient. Um, normally it's going to be the patient themselves. So you're just going to select the self radio button here. Now, there are other uh, times when it may be someone else that makes the decisions, uh, namely in the case of uh, a minor. So then in that situation, you will be selecting um, either a guarantor or you'd be selecting another patient. And it basically just depends on if this person is a patient of ours also or not. Now you can look, once you select, um, the, if you select the, another patient, basically you're just going to type in that patient's name there to look them up. Uh, under guarantor though, you're going to need to do uh, the same thing, but you probably will need to put in a brand new name. And in order to do that, we can just type, type XYZ here, which is going to pop up that little button there that says create new. And we're going to use that to create a new guarantor person that we're going to put in the system as this person's responsible party. 
Now that we have a responsible party in there, we're going to go ahead and move on to the additional information button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Now when we get into this area, there's going to be a couple of different things that we're going to be looking for uh, in the second column and the third column on this screen. First of all, it's going to be the default facility. That's going to be the location, the clinic location that you're going to be scheduling with. Uh, this patient for. So you'll need to ask them which uh, of our clinic locations are you wanting to be seen at so that you can make sure that you fill that in. Next are going to be these questions here under the structured question area uh, that are going to, the first one is asking you about if the person is um, um, a referral or how they heard about us. Moving down you have your COVID questions. There's questions asking if we can leave uh, um, information about their appointments on their voicemail and things like that so all of these six questions we need to ask and depending on depending on how you answer them uh, it will give you uh, more options and more questions to ask or not okay now let's move on to adding the insurance to the account so anytime you're scheduling an appointment for a patient we need to make sure that we are running their insurance to make sure that they are able to come here and to be seen so uh, we're going to click on the add button right here and that's going to bring up our insurance screen there's several fields that we need to get filled out here the first one is going to be here where we input the name of the insurance. You can also click on the three dots next to it if you wish and change from name lookup to phone number lookup or address lookup. Those are all ways that you can help yourself to find the insurance that the patient has. Another key tip is to make sure that the patient has their actual card in hand while they're talking to you. That way you will know specifically and you can ask them specific questions about the name of the insurance to help you find it. Be sure to click the primary insurance if this is their primary insurance. There are also fields for secondary or tertiary depending on which insurance this is for the patient. But if it's their primary, which is their only insurance, make sure you click primary. Also go ahead and put the subscriber number in there. That's their ID number for their insurance. Put that in there as well. Moving forward, and you go to the insured's name, that's the name of the person who owns the insurance policy. So for instance, if you have a husband and he is on his wife's insurance for her job, then his wife's name is going to go here under the insured's name field. If the person himself is, their, is the owner of their own policy, then you're just going to click self. If it's another patient that goes here also, then you'll put another, click another patient and put their name in there. And then if this is someone totally different, just like with the field for responsible party, you'll click on guarantor and you can click XYZ to um, pull up the create new button and create a new um, person if necessary. Now remember, if you do have to put someone else as the insured name there, like if it was the wife, then make sure that you click on the patient relationship button to the insured and select the correct relationship. So if this was his wife, then you need to put number two, spouse, um, so on and so forth, depending on the relationship that is there. After we have finished inputting the information in the uh, insurance fields, we're now going to run the insurance. So go ahead and click on this IE button. That stands for insurance eligibility. Once we've clicked on the IE button, it should pull up this screen that shows us uh, transaction timestamp and has this refresh button. We're going to click on the refresh button. If you do not see this refresh button, you need to make sure you hit resubmit down in the bottom left hand corner. All right, so go ahead and click on uh, refresh once you click on refresh it's going to pull up this screen that looks like this and there's going to be several different options on the left hand side which will either be blue or red right here you see that they're all blue that means that everything on this person's insurance has gone through fine and we are good to go with scheduling now if one of these shows up as red then there's some of the information that you have didn't go through or was incorrect for some reason so you'll need to review whatever it is with that patient to make sure that you get the correct information and can update it and then read um, resubmit re re it again to refresh and make sure that everything goes through properly. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit the X button in the top, on the top hand corner. If this patient does not have insurance or you're unable to run their insurance for some reason, um, then go ahead and hit the self pay button and then make sure that you let the person know that they are responsible for paying their payment at the time of the appointment in full. Um, 
make sure that they know that and you can note it also so that in case there's a situation we don't want the person coming to the front desk and saying well no one told me I was gonna to have to pay for anything make sure that you do tell the person up front alright now once we're done with that you can go ahead and hit the OK button in the bottom hand the bottom right hand corner and we have now completed this patient's uh, registration you'll see here that we have new patient uh, that the new patient's name here in our list here and so if you go back to the patient lookup button again that we did at the very beginning you will see this patient here if you look them up by their date of birth and their name all right if you have any questions about this feel free to reach out to your trainer um, so that we can go over those and we're going to do some examples thank you